Leslie, among the BRICS economies, China certainly is one of the biggest to shape. There is very strong demand for further rollout of infrastructure in uh, China. But it is clear now that the focus is on high quality growth. The focus is on more inclusive growth. It's about increasing the sustainability of the growth, reducing the rural urban divide in China, for example. Much bigger focus on Western China where the infrastructure is still weak because the Eastern corridor of China is very developed. All the coastal cities, Shenzhen, Shanghai, all of these are very, very uh, developed. So there's a, a change in the growth pattern in uh, uh, China, uh, but the productive base of China is still very uh, robust. It is still the biggest exporter in the world. Um, it is the biggest manufacturer of just about everything that the rest of the world uh, consumes. The expansion of BRICS, that has been a topic of focus, of course, throughout this uh, summit. I think this summit clearly is very different from earlier summits. Earlier summits, you know, the outreach was other presidents, you know, attending. But this time around, there is a strong momentum and interest about BRICS expanding. Everyone has expressed interest. When I say everyone, I mean the state leaders in expanding uh, BRICS. The name BRICS will change to BRICS Plus, meaning it's BRICS, BRICS Plus many other uh, countries. The other thing is about the currency. The notion of a BRICS currency is a more aspirational, long-term uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, no one has spoken about a BRICS currency in the official uh, meetings with President Xi Jinping, Prime Minister Modi, Prime Minister Ramaphosa, all of them have emphasized the use of local uh, currency because we do have strong capital markets in each of our member countries. What we're saying is we want to deepen those capital markets, make them more efficient, raise money in RAND so that we can remove the foreign exchange risks when our currencies uh, depreciate. So um, that's where the commitment comes from.